In NES Tetris, gravity will automatically move your piece towards the bottom of the board and lock it in place. If you don't have time for gravity, you can also hold the down button to make them go faster. You are awarded a small number of points when you do this, equal to the number of rows the piece falls. So for instance here, this piece will fall 15 rows to the bottom, so I am awarded 15 points. Or for this one, the piece will fall 18 rows, so I am awarded 12 points. The game just gave me 12 points for 18 cells of holding the down button. So there are some problems here. What do you think 97 plus 5 is? If your answer was 100, you are NES Tetris. Here's the deal. This number that you see in the score, it is not what it looks like. When we write numbers, we write them in a system of base 10. That means that each digit is valued as 10 times as much as the previous digit. Computers, on the other hand, work in binary. In this system, each digit is valued as 2 times the previous. In binary, there are only two digits, 0 and 1. So, when we see this number 15 on screen, if we wanted to represent that in binary, we would write it as 1111, which means 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, in the same way that our 15 means 10 plus 5. So, if we go ahead and look at the internal memory and see what the value is in the score, we would expect to see 1111. Except, what we really see in the memory is 10101. If we add that up, it is the number 16 plus 4 plus 1, which is 21, and that is most definitely not our score. To provide information to the player, the game has to draw the score to the screen in base 10. And in order to do this, it has to come up with what the component base 10 digits of the number are. If the number is held internally as 1111, well, how do you figure out the base 10 digits from that? And and remember, any math that you do has to be done in binary as well. So the developers of NES Tetris, they said, no, I'm not doing that. Instead, they decided to program the numbers to function as a janky workaround data format. That way, it would be easier for the code to pull out the digits later. That is why 15 is being represented as binary 21, because there is one simple trick that will get you the base 10 digits, 1 in 5, from that number almost instantly. Let's look at that binary again. I will add in the leading zero so that this is a full byte. Data on the console is stored on packets of 8 bits, that is 8 binary digits. Now we part the C's. Look at this. 1 on the left, 5 on the right. All you have to do to get the digits 1 and 5 from the binary number 21 is saw it in half. But now we have a problem. How do you get the numbers to be in this format? Let's say I scored 9 points here. What we want to see on screen is 24. And if we took our previous binary number, 0001, and added 9 to it, the result is 00011110. That is 30 in binary. And if we apply our splitting operation to it to get our digits, then our result is 1 and 14 as the two digits. So as a matter of convention, if a digit has a value greater than 9, then we assign them the letters of the alphabet in order. So 10 is A, 11 is B, 14 would be E. So when we do this on screen, we see the number 1E. That is not the 24 we wanted, so what's the solution? Well, the number we want to actually have in memory is 0010-0100, which would split up to the digits 2 and 4. Adding up that number in binary, we get the number 36. Our previous result was 30, so the correct thing to do in this situation is add 6. This will get us from the number 1E to the number 24. Let's break out a table here. On the left, we have the number of points to add. In the middle, we have what the score would show up as on screen after adding that many points. And on the right, what it would look like if we added an extra six points to it. You can see here that for zero to four, simply adding the number works perfectly. And then for most of the other cases, adding six is what you need. We're gonna ignore those ones at the very bottom where adding six doesn't work. It's not important for us. So then all we need to do is get the game to pick between not adding six and adding six, and we're golden. Now, let me highlight the cells that NES Tetris picks. Do you see the problem? It works fine for zero to four, and it successfully adds six for five to 10, and then it fails when we go above that. Right here, there's my 18 points scoring only 12. The reason why it's not working properly here should be pretty obvious based on which cases it adds six in. It's these ones, the ones where the initial output contains a letter. If the output does not contain a letter, the game does not attempt to correct the number, meaning that if your score overshoots that region, you miss out on those six points. There is, however, another wrinkle in this. As I said earlier, 97 plus 5 is 100 according to NES Tetris. 
So what does that look like in the chart? Well, the initial output would be 9C. And we'll just add a plus 6 here, since any Tetris would see the C and do that. So that will put us up to A2. And now we have to figure out how to fix the top digit. If we do the math here, the binary number that would show up as the 102 on screen is 258. The number we currently have is 162. The difference between those is 96. And that may seem arbitrary, but if I split 96 in half, you see that it's basically just adding 6, but one digit higher up. And for what it's worth, the 6 is originally coming from the fact that there are 6 letters that we have to skip over to get back to the numbers A, B, C, D, E, and F. So then all we have to do is add 96 when there's a letter in the top digit. Let me lay out how you would check for if there's a letter in the top digit. You would take the number, compare it to the number 160, which corresponds to a screen representation of A0, and if it's equal or greater than that, you would trigger the code to add 96. NES Tetris adds in one extra step that does not need to be there. Before comparing the number to 160, it deletes the lower digit of the number. Now think about it, the lower digit of the number doesn't matter. If you had a 99, that's less than A0, that's correct. If you had an A9, that's more than A0, that's also correct. There is no case where their detection fails due to the less significant component of the number. For whatever reason, when the lower digit is dropped in the test, it is never reinserted into the number. So the net result is that any time you add to the third digit, the ones digit is discarded from the score for no reason. And that pretty much concludes the explanation. Here's a table of every score and push down a result. You don't really need to know this table. There's only two rules. If you cross a multiple of 10 by more than six, you lose the six points. If you cross a multiple of 100, you lose anything in the ones digit. This edge case math makes the world record for most points without clearing lines notoriously unapproachable. There's literally one person who's held it for a few years now and refuses to let go of it. Now, I'm not telling you to take that record, but it is 352 if you're interested. Also, with pauses allowed, it's 359, so there is definitely room to improve. We also don't have a good task of the theoretical maximum pushdown, which would be an interesting puzzle to solve. The pieces that you want for the maximum pushdown is an infinite sequence of long bars, but that is actually not possible to get. I have another video on that. So that's what makes it pretty interesting to try to figure out.